Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I am Pastor Monique Bain. I am the visionary and the founder of Gems for Christ Women's Ministry. You can follow us via Facebook. Our timeline is Gems for Christ. You can also follow us via YouTube at Monique L. Ray. You can also follow us via Mixcloud and Soundcloud. And our feed is Gems for Christ Women's Ministry. I give honor to God. I give honor to my pastor, Apostle Desident Mevin of Jordan. And I give honor to you, you, and you. Thank you for joining Freedom Friday. <laughs> so let's get started. God, we thank you, we honor you, we worship you, we praise you, for you are so sovereign, you're so kind, you're so loving. Father God, we ask you, God, to forgive us for all our sins, and God, we want to tell you, thank you, God, God, for this is the time, God, for us to be free, God, free from anything, God, that's holding us back, Father God, that's keeping us, Father God, to get closer and further to you, Father God. God, let Monique decrease, God, let your Holy Spirit increase, God, and let your perfect will be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. My God, gems. So for our Freedom Friday, God has me in the book of Jeremiah. And I'm going to be reading Jeremiah 17 and 14. And then I'm going to skip over to Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. And it reads, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wore a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter, to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. My God, my God. Gems, for our Freedom Friday, God sent me here to let you know it's time to be free. <laughs> we know that Jeremiah, right, heart was so tender that they called him the weeping prophet. Jeremiah's message of hope and warning. The Israelites was getting so far away from their destiny and God was trying to call them back. Jeremiah was chosen by God to proclaim severe judgment upon the Israelites because they had willingly become involved in the practices and perversions of their pagan neighbors. Jeremiah knew he had to give tough messages. He was scorned and rejected by the people. Scorn means to feel or express contempt. Reject means to dismiss as inadequate or inappropriate. Jeremiah knew the terrible consequences of their sins would bring destruction of Jerusalem and their captivity in Babylon. God not only had Jeremiah to speak his message of judgment, but to actually perform it and to illustrate it. God had Jeremiah at times to demonstrate the destruction that God was speaking to him. And this was to identify Israel's pride and to expose their stubbornness. He prophesied of drought where the ground cracked from lack of water. He warned of lying prophets who would deceive their minds and declare worthless divinations. He also forewarned 
of shocking judgment. But through it all, Jeremiah also spoke of hope. You see, God won't leave you broken. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah was faithful in delivering the word of God to Israel, despite being rejected. Jeremiah trusted in God's promises, and he was committed to God. Because of Jeremiah's being committed to God, and because of what Jeremiah had to do in even though Jeremiah was faithful to what God was telling him, and even though he was speaking as an oracle and being an oracle and being God's mouthpiece, Jeremiah still himself had to say to God, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. You see, Jeremiah just didn't go through rejection. But also, Jeremiah dealt with depression. It, I'm pretty sure that because of what God had Jeremiah to do, it was not easy. It was not easy trying to forewarn the people and, and deliver God's message to a body of people, to the Israelites who was not willing to be able to receive what Jeremiah was saying. So there it stands to it stands to reason that Jeremiah would be a little depressed. It stands the reason that not only was God um, having Jeremiah to speak his word, but Jeremiah was also demonstrating it. So God was using Jeremiah as that example. And I'm sure that that was not easy to like give harsh words to a, a nation of people and then to actually walk around and demonstrate that harsh word that God is given, being that example. So Jeremiah himself had to even say, God, heal me. <laughs> this, this, is, this is rough. This is difficult. I need you to heal me, Father, because I know if you heal me, I'm going to be healed. I know if you save me, I know you're going to rescue me. For thou art my praise. I'm going to give you the praise. I'm going to give you praise for healing me. I'm going to give you praise for rescuing me. I'm going to give you praise for delivering me. But you see, Jeremiah had to ask God to heal him. Woo, gems. For our Freedom Friday, God sent me here to let you know it is time to be free. I don't know what that freedom looked like for you. I don't know what you're battling with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's coming up against you. But what I do know is it's time to be free. It's time for you to open up your mouth and say to God, God, heal me. God, save me. You see, God is waiting on you. God is a gentleman. God does not force himself. No, 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 no. He doesn't force himself upon mankind. Mm -mm. We have to invite God into our hearts. We have to invite God into our minds. We have to invite God into our lives. And how do we know when we really want to be healed? When we actually invite God in. And when we actually open up ourselves so that God can do what he needs to do in each one of us. A lot of people walk around and say that they want to be healed and they want to be delivered and they want to, to, um, to be set free, but they don't want to do the work. They don't want to put in the work. That requires the healing. They don't want to put in the work that requires them being delivered. They don't want to put in the work that requires them being set free. You see, Jeremiah was sent down to the potter's house mm -hmm. by God. God told him to go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. So he told Jeremiah, you go down to the potter house and I'm going to speak to you. And you're going to hear my words. And when Jeremiah went down to the potter house and he saw the potter with the vessels that he made from clay that that was marred in his hand. 
So he had begun to make it and make another vessel as seemed good to the potters to make it. And then that's when God began to speak to Jeremiah. And he says, come. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. Gems, God needs you to know that he has you in his hand. Yes, you may be marred. Yes, life may have beat you down. Yes, you may have been rejected. You may have been abandoned. You may have been scandalized. Your character may have come, people may have come up against your character to destroy your character. Your integrity may have been questioned. But God is saying, Throughout all of that, throughout the molestation, throughout the abuse, throughout the abandonment, throughout the rejection, throughout the rape, throughout everything that you had to deal with, and not just at the hands of anyone else, but even the decisions that you have made concerning your own lives that was out of the will of God and contrary to the will of God, okay, all right? Because yes, at times we have made decisions that was contrary to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we thought that we knew more than God. We thought that we was bigger than God. We thought that we didn't need God. Uh, uh, come on here, let's be honest. We didn't always cross every T and dot every I. There were some decisions that we have made for ourselves that was contrary against God, but aren't we glad for God's grace and his mercy? Aren't we glad that we're in the potter's hands? Aren't we glad that even though we're marred, even though we're flawed, even though we are imperfect, aren't we glad that God has us on the potter's will, puning us, taking out all the pebbles, taking out everything that's in us to create us to be more like him? Aren't we glad that God will never leave us nor forsake us? Aren't we glad that through every situation, God is right there? But all it requires is to say, God, heal me and save me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to ask God to heal us and save us from decisions that we have made. We have to ask God to heal us and save us from, from things that people have done. Yes. Oh, yes. No matter what you do, you make sure that your heart is in the right posture with God. Because when your heart is not in the right posture with God, you stop your blessings. I'm going to say that again. When your heart is not in the right position and posture with God, you stop your blessings. When unforgiveness is in your heart, you stop your blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you stop it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, no one can do anything that we don't allow. Don't hinder your process. Don't hinder your blessings. Don't hinder your favor. Don't hinder the manifestations of God that's on your lives. It is time to be free. It is time to let go and it's time to move forward. God has so much more for you, but you got to walk through that door. Oh my God. You got to walk through the door of process. You have to walk through the door of pruning. You have to walk through the door of healing. You have to walk through the door of wholeness because I promise you when you walk through that door, when you get on the other side, you are going to be able to give God a crazy praise. Because when you realize what's on the other side of that door, you will say in your mind, God, if I had known what was waiting for me on the other side of the door, I would have gotten it together way before now. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's where faith come in. You see, a lot of times you want to be able to see what's on the other side of the door in order for you to let go. But no, no, no. This is the time that you got to let go before you can see it. Oh, my God. This is the time that you got to let go before you can see it. This is the time that you have to trust God like never before and have faith in God like never before. This is the time to be free from anything that's hindering you. And the truth of the matter, a lot of times it's not people that's hindering you. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, give, let's give a little honesty here. A lot of times it's not people that's hindering you. It's not people that's holding up your process. A lot of times you are hindering you. Mm -hmm. You're hindering you. Get out of your way. Because when you get out of your way, then you get up, you're able to get out of God's way concerning you. God can't do what he needs to do in your life because you're too busy blocking him. You won't move. You won't release control. You still trying to fix it. You still trying to figure out. When God said, uh-uh, I don't need for you to figure out. That's not your job. But I need you to heal. So that you can live in the manifestations of my promises. That's what I need you to do. I need you to become whole. God has made some promises over your lives. But it requires, it requires healing and wholeness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that when you open up your mouth, mm -hmm, you can give a God response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can always tell a person who's not healed. Mm -hmm. Because when they open up their mouths, they give a self response. Mm -hmm. When they open up their mouths, they want to attack somebody else. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of that when people want to open up their mouths or they want to or, or, or text something or they want to post something. Mm -hmm. But they try to throw shade. This is the season that when people throw shade, let it cover you. <laughs> when people throw shade, let it cover you. That's what shade does. <laughs> it covers. <laughs> When people throw shade, let it cover you. Because when people throw shade, a lot of people try to throw shade to try to expose somebody or to expose what they think they know. And a lot of times what they expose is their own selves and they expose what's in their own hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My pastor preached this last past Sunday and throughout his message, he pretty much said to, to the audience, to everyone in the church, mind your business. He said it to everyone in the church, and he said it to everybody that was viewing on Zoom, mind your business and stay out of somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. You know why a lot of people are unhappy? Because they're too busy in somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> too busy in somebody else's business. Being in somebody else's business doesn't free you. Being in somebody else's business, it keeps you a hostage. It hinders you. Mm -hmm. Throwing shade, it hinders you. Mm -hmm. This is the season to be free. That's what the season is. It's to be free. Don't be a stubborn clay. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when I was in when I was in college, I took up pottery. And I didn't really like it. <laughs> I didn't like the clay between my fingers and nothing getting underneath my fingernails. Yes, I was bougie like that. <laughs> but I did it enough to pass the class. <laughs> but aren't we glad that God is not bougie? Aren't we glad that God does not mind dealing with our mess? Ooh. <laughs> Aren't we glad that he does not mind gutting us and purging us, cleaning us up? Aren't we glad? You see, when we become stubborn clay, we become unusable. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing pottery 
When the clay got hard as a rock, we couldn't do anything with it. It wouldn't bend. It couldn't turn. We couldn't do anything. So we had to put it back in that big barrel where the water was at so it can moisten back up and become usable again. Do not become that stubborn clay. It's time to be free. Mm -hmm. Ask God to heal you. Ask God to save you because he can do it. Mm -hmm. And do, do he do it in the sense that you no longer remember? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. God is the only one that can throw our sins in the sea of, forget of forgetfulness. God did not create us to be able to forget. He created us to be able to forgive. That when we open up our mouths, we'll be able to talk from a place of healing and from a place of wholeness. Mm -hmm. You can pretty much tell who's healed and who's whole by the words that they use and how they use it. It exposes every time. Mm -hmm. It exposes every time. And not only expose what's on your mind, but it expose what's in your heart. It's time to heal, gems. Whatever that healing may be for you, it's time to heal. Do not be that stubborn clay. But open up your mouth and ask God to heal you and to save you. And I promise you, I'm a witness. God will heal you and he will save you in the midst of it all. So you're able to even love the very ones who try to hurt you. You want to know when you're really healed and hold, when you can love on the very ones who hurt you. Mm -hmm. You want to know when you're healed and hold, when you can look in the mirror and love yourself and be proud of where God brought you from and excited about where he's taking you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Word of God said, love your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. This is the word of the Lord. Is it always easy? No. No, it's not always easy. But it's necessary. When you can forgive the very ones who God used to process you, <laughs> then that's when you know you are healed. Yeah. When you can forgive the very ones who God used to process you, that's how you know you're healed. And trust me, they're going to go through their process too. <laughs> we all going to be processed. <laughs> we all going to be gutted. We all going to be pruned. When we all get in a position to say, God, heal me. I'm a witness. When you ask God to heal you, he will. He will heal your heart. He will heal your mind. And you will be able to soar and prosper in the things of God. God loves you. For our Freedom Friday, God sent me here to let you know it is time to be free. Free yourselves. Free your hearts. Free your minds. Let it go. And be who God called you to be. Do what he called you to do. Because he loves you. I would love to hear your testimony. My God, you can reach out. Facebook Messenger. I am excited. Reach out. Give me your praise reports. You can come down to the physical church. 85 Rockaway Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Again, where my pastor is apostle. Designate Merit of Jordan. 
at the senior ministries. We would love to hear about your praise report. But Gems, it is time to heal. Christ is soon to return. He is soon to return. He is soon to return. Yeah, he's descending back. And it is time to get right. It is time to heal. My God, God has so much more. Don't stop your blessings. Don't hinder your blessings. God, Jims, I'm telling you, don't do it. When you heal and you see what God has for you, oh my God, your heart we just begin to glow. You will be glowing from the inside out. You will be glowing from the inside out. You will not even be able to contain your glow. You will not even be able to contain your joy. You will not even be able to contain the love that God has placed inside of you. It is time for you guys to heal. Oh my God, I'm telling you, Gems, when you walk through those doors, when you walk through the process of healing, then you're able to walk through the doors of manifestation. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. When you walk through the doors of process, then you're able to walk through the doors of manifestation. And I'm so excited about them doors that God has for you guys. <laughs> if you get, if you can see a glimpse of those doors, ah, you'll be like Pastor Ray. <laughs> Just a glimpse of those doors. Hill, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. It doesn't matter what anybody say about you. It doesn't matter what you think about you. It doesn't what the doesn't matter what the enemy tries to tell you about you. Stand on what God thinks about you. Make that your focus. And surround yourself with people that love God. Because when they love God, then they'll be able to love you. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. And we are all on the potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are all on that potter's wheel. The potter doesn't force us on the wheel. God doesn't force us on that wheel. He doesn't. I'm telling you. He doesn't force you on the wheel. Volunteer and get on that wheel and say, come on here, God. Do it in me. Come on here, God. Make me over again. Come on here, God. My heart is open. I'm ready to receive. Heal me, Father. Save me, Father. So that I can exhort your name. And when everyone look at you and be like, you look different. You act different. You move different. They're going to be able to look at you and know that it's all because of God. When they look at the blessings that's on your life and the doors that God has you walking through, they're going to know that it's all because of God. God loves you guys. I love you guys. It is time to heal. Gems, don't be that stubborn clay. <laughs> but let God be God in your life, through your life, know that God loves you. And if you don't have a relationship with God, all you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and you shall be saved. It's just that simple. Know that God loves you and I love you too. Be blessed.